feels he would be more comfortable if I moved in with him in Florida. Did he ask you how you feel? My dear, we have to face the fact that we're not as young as we were. What on earth has that got to do with it? Henry, the IRS has absolutely no appreciation of fairy stories. Oh, if you... I know this isn't your favorite subject, but when the IRS starts making threats, you have to take them seriously. What they find hard to believe is that you can still manage I mean, why should we have to fight for the right to be allowed to make our own decisions? It might help if you were to occasionally produce a receipt. You haven't listened to a word I've said. Hmm? Sorry, it's that voice. Voice? That voice reminds me of the time I was in London in 1916. I arrived with my friend Remy. We first met in Mexico, but he was Belgian, and he'd come to join the Belgian army so he could fight the Germans who had invaded his country two years earlier. British argue with the French army Just fighting among themselves. I guess they need us. <laughs> the truth is, when you're 17 and you see a fight going on, you tend to think it'd be a good idea to join in. It wasn't that good an idea, but I didn't know that then. Hey, you see that? Wait until we're in uniform, my boy. There is not a woman who can resist the uniform. The prestige of the uniform. We will have the pick of every girl in London. And then come on, come on. <laughs> Look, man. It's here. <laughs> this is the recruiting office? And what did you expect? Belgium is a small country. Come on. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, what can I do for you? We want to enlist. Are you sure it is the Belgian army you wish to join? Oui, je suis belge. Ah bon? Vous aussi belge? Oui, bien sûr. Hmm. Asseyez-vous. Belgian also? Oui. Mm -hmm. And your name is Henri? Henri de France. Henri de France. Um, name of father, Henri de France also. Uh, name of mother, Anna Jones. Your parents are not married? Oui. No, oui, oui, oui. Anna Jones de France. Date of birth. 1891. So you're 25? No, 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 22. I was born in 1894. Not uh, very many people forget their birthday, Monsieur... Défense. You're the worst liar I've ever met. Welcome to the Belgian army. Sign here. All you had to do was to say, I'm Henry Jones, I want to join the Belgian army. They will take anyone. Attention, attention, mes amis, messieurs, mesdames, English friends. I give you a toast. Rémi Baudouin, Indiana Jones, et la Belgique. À la Belgique. Good night. In the, uh, Madame Suzette has invited me to go up to her apartment for a cup of coffee. She's a widow. Her husband was killed fighting Germans. A bit of luck, huh? Luck? Yes. She's been alone for two years. 
Because there is nothing like a widow. Mr. Indy, will you come and join us for a cup of coffee? Uh... No. Thank you, madam. I have to go to Oxford to visit my old tutor. All right, goodbye. You need to stay here and find a nice English widow. Tell her you joined the army and that you will be dead within the months and she'll deny you nothing. Sure, ma'am. I know it goes to Paddington Station. Oh, I say. You're an American, aren't you? I simply adore Americans. Do tell me, what are you doing over here? I've just joined the Belgian Army. I'm waiting to be sent to France. How brave and noble of you. My husband was at the front, but he was killed a month ago. Oh, darling. Really? I'm so sorry. Sweet of you to say so. Oh, is that the bus? Conductor, you go to Bayswater. That's right, madam. Step lively there. It's an awfully dark night. These beastly zeppelins are coming over earlier and earlier. Hold me tight, Any fares, please? Please do allow me. Oh, thank you. One to Bayswater and one to Paddington. Two tuffins, please. And you might be interested in reading this. Here you go. Thank you. Well, really. What is it? A suffragette meeting. Disgraceful. Why didn't you come? Wouldn't do you any harm to learn about the problems of real women. Oh, dare you. Typical of these suffragettes. Always abusing and bully-ragging anyone who disagrees with them. Even a war widow. I'm sorry. I wish there was something I could do. How kind you are. One feels so lost and lonely. You're so beautiful, I wouldn't think you'd ever be lonely. Sweet of you to say so. But listen, I have an idea. What did you say you were getting off, Bayswater? Why don't I get off with you? I beg your pardon? I could come home with you. Maybe have a cup of coffee and then maybe... You must be mad. I don't even know you. Well, we could soon fix that. Well, you did say you were lonely. I have never been so insulted in my life. Conductor, stop the bus. But I could be dead within a month. Taxi! shelter under that bus. Where's my hat? George! Oh, 
sure it's a close one. Do you think the bus is going to start? You don't think they're going on, Miss Becky? Are you? Yes, of course. If the road's passable, we've got to finish our route. Oh, well. In for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> Go on, everyone. Are you all right? Yes, of course. If we give up every time a bomb falls anywhere near us, we're never going to win the war. Is that a bugle? It's all right. It's not sounding the call to arms. It's the all clear. No more Zeppelins tonight? So do you always give your passengers such an exciting ride? Oh, no. They don't all insult lady passengers and end up on the floor of the bus. I don't have to tell any of you, even those of you who don't believe in votes for women, how much we suffered for the cause. Prison, forcible feeding. Serves you right, you silly cows. That's all right. We didn't do it to impress you, sir. I tell you now, that battle is not over. Some people say, that while the war is on, we should suspend the struggle. They say that women should be content to work as sweated labor as long as it contributes to victory. But what kind of victory would that be that uses the starvation of women and children? What are you doing here? You invited me? I just and for the men. You gave this to me? I call that an invitation after the war, even though the men returning from the front are unemployed. We aren't only fighting for votes for women. We are fighting for justice and democracy for everyone. If we are to play our full part in building a better anger. world shush, after the war, shush. then it must be on equal terms, both men and women. My friends, we demand adult suffrage, not more, and certainly not less. Deeds, not words. Can we go now? Oh. From the East London Federation of Suffragettes, I would like to call on Maisie Kemp, Maisie, who is going to talk to us on the important subject of equal pay for equal work. Brothers and sisters. Sisters? Blimey, missus, you ain't I've got a large family. Miss <laughs> Pankhurst has asked me to speak to you today. Speak up, we can't hear you. She's asked me to speak to you today because I'm one of those women who, has ans who, who have answered the government's call to work. Well, why aren't you working any old time? <laughs> we are glad to help with the war effort by taking the place in the munitions factory and at the workbench of our men at the front. But it is work, and we work hard. Work hard. When a man gives his wife, his wife, money for housekeeping... If you was my wife, you'd be lucky to get a penny. Hey, if you were a husband, she'd need all the luck she could get. That's right. That gentleman's right. And we don't want luck, and we don't want charity. 
I know girls what's working in munitions factories, getting wages half as much as what the men used to get paid for the same job. Now that's not right, and no one can say that it is. Equal pay for equal work, that's all we're asking. Equal pay for equal work. after the meetings, yes. Great. I fought for the peasants in Mexico. Really? The busy life you've led. Well done, well done, Mr... Uh, um... Jones, Indiana Jones. Well done, Mr. Jones. Mrs. Kemp was rather nervous tonight. She'd never spoken in public before. But she'll be all right now, thanks to you. Hello, Vicky. Don't forget that that piece you're going to write for the Dreadnought is due in next week. Yes, of course. Mr. Jones, you have struck a better blow for freedom than if you'd spent a whole year in the trenches. Well, as a matter of fact, that uh, <clears throat> I've joined the Belgian army. The Belgian army? Vous parlez français, alors? Oui, tu le parles couramment. Wirklich? Sie werden mir gleich noch sagen, dass Sie auch Deutsch sprechen. Ja, 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 natürlich. Ich spreche viele Sprachen. Anche l'italien, no? Se si parla il francese e lo spagnolo, l'italiano non è poi difficile imparare. The module number, sir. Da hoi nem. <laughs> Ni vecca ha haft en cosmopolitic ub extet. Erdet vo optimisticht atruat ni prata svenska. Inter als, jacares mjuka. Ox Stockholm. Er en af mine favoritter der. Que mi posta taxidia sas, ses eliesos, que sinalada. Ne, a la protimoteron crino tu orhaisen, tu sutos gas esti puenticoteron. Wabel shakun ana alluchia al arabia, alluchia tunga di majara ala tarafuha. Elogia, el Arabia, hier Elogia, ta almatuha, andama, di hiptu, ila al kahira. Queruch, oisen riole anabid, redich, hepwot. What language is that? You mean your name is Jones, yet you don't speak Welsh? <laughs> 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 well, my mother was Welsh, and she used to always speak to us in Welsh when we were children. Mm. I'd run out of everything else. And you did pretty well. My father was a Scotsman, but mostly spoke medieval English. Well, my father's a diplomat, and we used to travel with him when we were children. And he used to always talk to us in whatever language of the country we were in. Mm. My father felt the same way. When I was ten, he went around the world giving lectures, and my mother and I went with him. I'm surprised we never met. Maybe we didn't. Didn't know it. Mm. We had a terrible time with the camel drivers in Egypt. So did we. My tutor wouldn't pay what they asked, and they took us to the pyramids. And I left you there? That's what they did to us. <laughs> the moon's out. That means no more Zeppelins tonight. Then, sweetheart? Are you all right? My shoes come off. Here, let me put it back on for you. Edie, don't make a nuisance of yourself. That was a horrid fall. Edie, can't you see in the lady's way? Come Mom, on. I want to go home. But 
you can't, and it wouldn't do you no good if we did, because there ain't nothing to eat. You don't have any food. We'll be all right, miss. We don't want to bother nobody. We'll be all right. We... If there's anything we can do... Just please don't speak kind to me, sir. Because if you do... <laughs> there's a stall over the other side of the park. We can get a cup of tea. That's, that's a good idea. You want a cup of tea, Edie? And a bun. Oh, a bun too. <laughs> My husband joined up a year ago. He sent me money every week, regular as clockwork. Four weeks ago, it stopped. I can't pay the rent, miss. That's the trouble. The landlord says he's going to turn us out. I, I know there's been a lot of casualties where he is. So, you haven't had any money in four weeks? I, I went to the Soldiers and Sailors Association yesterday. They said they'd come and see me tomorrow, so they might be able to do something. But just in case they can. Oh, no, thank you, sir. I ain't never taken charity. I'm not starting now. My Tom wouldn't like it. Charity? No, no, that... that never entered my mind. I, I was thinking more of a loan. Just to tide you over so that you can pay your rent. Oh, I don't know, miss. How, how could I... Well, the young lady could write down her name and address. Yes, yes, of course. And as soon as you get everything sorted out, you can pay me back. Oh, no, sir, that's too much. Edie? Georgie? Come on, kids. Going home. You've got a really nice young gentleman there, miss. Come on. Yes. They don't half talk funny. Well, he's an American. Oh, well. That explains it. Thank heaven you thought of calling it alone. My mother taught me when we were in China that it's very important for people to save face, even if they are starving. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. I'd like to see you again. Would you? But I have to go to Oxford tomorrow. Oh. Well, good night then. Good night. But I was going to ask you to go with me. To Oxford? Yeah. I can't. I'm on duty. Well, good night, then. But I get off work at one o'clock. Seymour won't mind having a complete stranger in person after the night. Of course she won't. I told you. I sent her a telegram. Yes, but she didn't have any time to write back and say, no, thank you. She wouldn't do that. I told her you're a friend of mine. She's... It's kind of hard to explain. She's almost family. Since my mother died, she knows me better than anyone else. I thought you said she was your tutor. Yes, but it was more than that. She taught my father when he went to Oxford. And when we went around the world, she came with us. I was only 10 years old, but she treated me like an Oxford University scholar. But almost everything I know, I owe to her. I hope she likes me. Miss Seymour, this is Miss Prentice. How do you do? I'm afraid this is a terrible imposition. Not at all. Do come in. Henry, I've just received a letter from your father. Very distressed, because you said that you had joined the revolution in Mexico. So, what are you doing here? I came to join up. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. Well, Ned wrote to me from Egypt. He's fighting this war. And I think I should, too. 
Mr. Lawrence is a great deal older than you, and his country is at war with Germany. Yours isn't. You will go back home and finish your education. And if America enters the war, then possibly that will be the time to consider whether... It's too late. I've joined the Belgian army. They've accepted me, and that's the end of it. Have you told your father? What? No, not yet. In that case, you will go into my study, sit down at my desk, and write a letter to your father telling him what you have done. But, Miss Seymour, it's... Very minute, Henry. Yes, Miss Seymour. I'll show you to your room, Miss Prentice. And then perhaps you'd like a cup of tea. Yes, Miss Seymour. I remember your father very well. I gave him a sort of crammer's course in Balkan history, so of course he was sent to Egypt instead. <laughs> I've never had much opinion of the Foreign Office. Ah, oh, Henry. Is that the letter? Yeah. Give it to me. I'll see that it's posted. Huh. Would you like a cup of tea? Thank you. I've been invited to a dinner party this evening. Might be interesting. Winston Churchill will be there. Isn't he in France? He's on leave, I imagine. Brilliant mind. Remarkable military strategist. His judgment is not always sound, of course. Certainly not about women's suffrage. A great many people were wrong about women's suffrage, including the suffragettes. Oh. Well, but who's Winston Churchill? Didn't you agree with women's suffrage, Miss Seymour? I certainly don't believe that throwing stones and burning down politicians' houses is the right way to prove your fitness to take part in the government of the country. Until a woman did those things and went to prison and nearly died for their beliefs, no one took any notice. But was it the right kind of notice? My dear young lady... Please don't call me that. I'm not a dear young lady, yours or anybody else's. I am a woman, and as an intelligent woman, I have a right to vote. If you don't believe that, then you have no business teaching anyone history, literature, or even how to boil an egg. That's a very spirited young woman. It's all right, I'm packing. Why? Because I was so rude. She likes you. Oh, she can't possibly. One thing about Miss Seymour, she doesn't shock easily. She wondered if we'd like to go to the dinner party. Really? Do you want to? Sure. I just hope no one mentions women's suffrage. <laughs> <sighs> but in Mr. Asquith's place, I would recommend rather longer. <laughs> My father says you either love I've or hate, but not to suffer in the same time. from German superiority in the air. We must build more airplanes. We must have an efficient air ministry. Personally, I think there should be a general election on a motion of no confidence in the conduct of the war. Oh, I entirely agree with you. But if this government continues to deny the vote to soldiers who are serving in France, what kind of a democracy would that be? What kind of a democracy is it now when half the population are not allowed to vote simply because they are women? I fear that you are using the privilege of charming women everywhere and changing the subject. We're well, speaking of changing the subject. You're talking about the right to vote. You say that soldiers deserve it, and so they do, but so do women. My dear young lady. You are confusing two very different issues. We're well, speaking of different issues. Well, absolute tosh. It's exactly the same issue. Anyone of whatever sex. Speaking of sex. Who has no voice of the government of the country is not a citizen but a slave. is a very spirited young lady.
behavior last night was quite unpardonable. I was your guest. I was there as your guest, and I embarrassed you. There's really no excuse, except that my mother was a suffragette. She was put in prison, went on hunger strike, was forcibly fed, and has been an invalid ever since. And when I heard Mr. Churchill being so... so dismissive... In your place, I would have done exactly the same. But the trifle... <laughs> Forgive me. Henry was a remarkable boy and shows every sign of growing up to be a remarkable man. He certainly has a tremendous respect for you, but I think he thinks quite rightly that I've now let him down. Good morning, Henry. Did Emily see you? Yes. I hope you like a four-minute egg. I've told her not to cook any other kind. Coffee? Yes, thank you. Deeds, not words. <laughs> Henry, we're not at the zoo. <laughs> On my right, we had University College. Now, that was my father's college. I believe it was Shelley's, too. Hail to the blind spirit. Going to the west wind? Skylar. What happened to him? Shelley, he was drowned on the coast of Italy. Can't be too careful. No, you come on. <laughs> <laughs> When are you likely to be called up, Mr. Turner? I'm not sure, sir. I guess any day now. And presumably you volunteer, even though America has not yet entered the war. And what do your mother and father think of it? Well, my mother died three years ago. I'm so sorry. I just felt that there was something that was wrong. And that I should get in there and do something about it, no matter what. No matter what the cost. Mother knows all about that. Vicky said that you were a suffragette. Yes. And that they put you in prison and treated you pretty badly. They treated her horribly, much worse than the ordinary prisoners. But the ordinary prisoners weren't on hunger strikes. They weren't force-fed either. Yes, it was pretty bad. It was so painful and humiliating. Being tied down and <clears throat> having a tube forced down your throat. And uh, the worst thing of all was hearing the others scream and know it was your turn next. How did you get through it? Well, it was like fighting a war. We had a great sense of comradeship, and I thought of my husband, who backed me all the way, although it was very damaging to his career, having a suffragette as a wife. And I remembered Vicky, and I thought it will all be worthwhile. If my girl can have a say in the government of the country like any other intelligent human being. And if I can live the life I want to live. Within reason. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> oh, good tea.
One of these days I'll take you to see the Great Wall of China. <laughs> really? Sounds like you've mapped my life out for me. Whoa. <laughs> I... What? Do you love me? The question is, do you love me? Yes. I love you. I love you too. all eager delight. Her eyes were here, there, everywhere, as they approached its fine and striking envoys, and afterwards drove through those streets which conducted them to the hotel. She was come to be happy, and she felt happy already. Thank you, Miss Seymour. I didn't realize how much I needed a holiday. Please, come and stay any time. Thank you. Henry, do you know when you'll be called up? Soon, I guess. Well, let me know. I'll come and see you off. Excellent, Vicky. It makes it clear that we are not asking for special terms, only common justice. Well done. I wonder, though, does it need a more catching title, do you think? Deeds? Not words? Ah, Mr. Jones, isn't it? Good idea. What do you think, Vicky? Uh, well, I'll think about it. Good to see you, Mr. Jones. Indy. Remy has her call up papers. never love anybody else as much again, but I can't marry you. But why? Because I want to be a writer, a journalist. Well, what's that got to do with it? I want to be an archaeologist. But that's exactly my point. A man can marry and have a career, but a woman can't. At least not until she's established. I do want to have children one day, but not now. Not yet. 
can't you see? My life's just beginning. And to get married now would be like putting a stopper on it all. All that energy and ambition just shut up inside marriage. It, it doesn't have to be like that. But it is. Well, if you really love me, then... I do. And there's another thing, too. What we feel now for each other is something... something so strong, but the war could go on for another two or, or three years. And when it's over, we could be two different people. Don't you see? It wouldn't be fair on either of us to... to make promises now that we wouldn't be able to keep. Please understand. It's not too difficult to understand. You're turning me down. Indy, please. It's all right. It's probably all for the best. Besides, in three days' time, we'll be in France anyway. Indy. training short these days. And mind you write to me. And your father. I will. And please, Henry, don't take any stupid risks. Just to show off. I'll try not to. I were married this morning. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Goodbye, Mr. Well, goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, my darling. See you later. ticket for that bus ride. Well, she was right. If we had met after the war, we would have been two different people. Come along, dears. Deeds, not words. Vicky? 